Do you know that a sedge has an edge? The world of sedges, we are about to learn about the native and the non-native, and I'm going to Joy Bovin at Bates Nursery, and she is in charge of a lot of things here, but today her expertise with us is going to be about sedges. Why don't you tell me why we should grow sedges? Well, there are a lot of different sedges uh, available now, way more than there ever has been in the past. Um, they've gained in popularity quite a bit. Uh, the, the native options have definitely ex exploded, and, and the non-natives as well for accent, color, and uh, function in the landscape too. Durability. Mm -hmm. There's different shades of green and blue, and then with the non-native, we've got some variegated options as well. Yeah. Uh, you can. F Typically, the native ones like it a little bit more on the moist side, uh, but there are dry shade options as well. I think that's a good difference there to know that we can plant them in two different kind of environments and they're survivors. They're native and they're survivors. Yeah, yes, and as we are looking for more alternatives to turf, turf grass, sedge is a great option. Specifically, Pennsylvania sedge is, is great, blue wood sedge for shade turf in particular. Okay. Not a lot of the sedges can do, perform well in sun. Let me ask you this, do you have a, I know that uh, you do assist here, and do you have a problem ever convincing someone that they should use a sedge? Sometimes, they don't always see the beauty of them, um, but with some of the cultivars that are coming out now, they're a little bit more appealing. Yes, they are. Um, but it's also, we've got to start changing the conversation a little bit about why, what specifically natives, why we want to be planting more of those. Mm -hmm. uh, sedge is considered a host plant for several species of skipper moths. Oh, that's fun to know. Yeah, and so it's an additional ecosystem function that they serve. We're going to start off with the natives over here. Sure. Tell us about this one right here. All right, this is Carex bunny blue, or hob is, is the botanical name mm -hmm. given to it. Uh, it. It keeps that blue color pretty much throughout the season. It's evergreen. Oh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that one will recede. So if you're looking for an alternative for shade turf, I think it makes an exceptionally great option. How does this reproduce? Does it reproduce from this or does yes. it so, runners? Yes, yeah, so they'll form seeds on those yes. ends of these portions yeah. here and then they'll fall to the ground or birds will take them off yeah. and then they'll pop up in other areas of your landscape, which sometimes you don't want, um, but they're, they're really easy to pull up. And that's the but main if used, thing. Yeah, and if used, used as a turf alternative, that's exactly what you want. Let's talk about Pennsylvania sedge. Uh, this is really the first to um, hit the scene for turf replacement and it's because it recedes it just it has a really nice look to it in mass. I wanted to kind of emphasize another reason why we need to be replacing turf with more ground cover that's that we don't mow. A lot of insect species will drop from the canopy layer onto the ground layer and that's where they pupate finish out their life cycle so when when we have mature trees in an area and, and turf we're disrupting that cycle that they go through. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, without even knowing it, we're mowing over them. Well, let's talk about the non-natives. And they may be the ones that people are more familiar with. Mm -hmm. So let's, I, I love, let's start over here in the front. This is that chartreuse color. Yes, that is Everillo. It's a part of the Ever Evercolor series. And there's several within that series. That one definitely gets the biggest out of, out of all of those. When you say um, big, how big? Ah, oh, in the landscape, almost two by two. Oh, yeah, two, two. 24 inches by 24 inches. And it stays that color all winter. It does. That's yes, a good thing. It is really a statement, and it brightens up a, a darker space. And I can see that being used with a lot of the hookahs and the mm -hmm. all of those different colors. Oh yeah, colors. and a blue hosta. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. They all the color palette is excellent. Now I like the little fuzzies going on here. What is this mm -hmm. one? Very decorative. That's Everglow. That's another one of the Evercolor series. Uh huh. Um, and right next to it, we've got, this is Feather Falls. That's a newer one. Uh, supposed to get about 12 inches, but it looks to me like it's gonna get a little bit bigger than that. Can I testify here? Yes, you may. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I purchased two of these last fall, and I put them in some urns, some gray urns, and they have been beautiful. 
all winter. They did not yeah. get winter burn on them. They're not like your uh, La Ropey and how some of those grasses do. So this has really filled a gap for me as yeah. to how to put some winter color and beauty actually into those containers. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because these sedges are great as winter container. Okay, well right. here's a nice little feathery one. Mm -hmm, that's a little bit smaller, that's ever gold. That was one of, the, it was the first one I think of that series and they don't always group it into the Evercolor series, but Evergold leads yeah. one to think that it might be. Again, it's it's evergreen. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the main thing, because when, when all the pretties go away, what is our following, what is our foundation gonna look like? Mm -hmm. And these things actually will add color, texture, and, and harmony to the winter landscape as well. Yeah. yeah, they have great function. Okay, I think we skipped over this little baby. Ice dance. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, that was that. That's one of the older cultivars that has been in the market for quite some time. So it gets overlooked because of all the new and exciting ones. Exactly. But that one performs just fine in the landscape. Sedge in general, they will typically don't want to cut them back. Yeah, there are exceptions, but really you want those old blades to fall to the base as the new come up. Right. And then you just clean up those old blades. And it just becomes a, a, like a big patch of turf. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Joy, because you've added joy to my day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.